Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a pattern called Pointy Strip Star. This is a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern. I use a lot of their patterns because they're very easy to follow. I know if I follow all the directions, they're going to come out successfully. And this one, it's got these really nice big stars. It's got half stars and quarter stars around the edges and it's got multiple sizes. I'm gonna make the twin size, and this pattern takes jelly roll strips, and we need 36 of them for the twin size. Now, most jelly rolls come with 40 strips, so you can do it with almost any jelly roll. I'm going to use this one today. It's got nice colors, and this is only a 20-piece jelly roll, and I'm not gonna use these light ones, so I'm going to use, I'm probably going to need three of these to get a nice color blend. The only other fabric we need right now is a background. And I'm going to use a light colored background like they show in the pattern, but I'm gonna use one with metallic accents. So some of the prints we use, they have these metallic accents that you see here. So this has gold, it's got little bits of bling, and that really makes the pattern pop when you're using it with something like this, which has some little metallic dots in it. So I think I want something pretty light and this one is very interesting, so let's go with this swirly one here. So let's see what these strips look like. Let's see what kind of colors we've got in here. We do wanna make sure that all of the strips we use are dark enough so that they will show up against the background. So I'm immediately going to lose all of those guys. The rest of these are probably dark enough because these strips are variegated, so they have light in the middle, but they're darker on the ends. I've got my 36 strips all picked out, and now we're ready to do the subcuts. Now I can't give you all the sizes of the subcuts because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt Designs patterns are very easy to follow and they give you all the sizes. Now before you do any cutting, it's always a good idea to take your pieces out of the package and iron them first so you can get accurate cuts. The next step is to put a mark on each one of these strips. Now, the big strips are going to get marked on the left side. So you're going to either need a pencil or a chalk pencil, depending on how light or dark your fabrics are. So check the pattern, it will tell you where to make that mark. And as long as you're within the quarter inch seam allowance, it's okay if you put a little line there. Now these little ones are gonna get marked on the right side and I'm gonna use the chalk pencil there because it's so dark. Now we need some squares and some rectangles out of the background fabric. So there's my squares and my rectangles. Now the squares are going to get cut on the diagonal. Okay, all of the cutting is done and now we need to put a mark on the back side of all of the rectangles. So you'll see here we've got half marked slanted down to the left and half of them marked slanted down to the right and now we're ready to start sewing. Now we've got the longer colorful rectangles there and our backgrounds that are drawn like this. So take one of these and find that little mark that we made and then you take the background piece and we are going to, oops, just one of them. We're gonna slide this around and spin it a little so that this tip here is on that mark and the bottom line here, you wanna line that up with the corner of the block. So it takes a little bit of moving around to get it all lined up. Now you can either pin it. Some people like to use a glue stick. So this is a glue stick that you can use for fabric and you can, Put a little dot of it here. This part's going to get cut off anyway, so that won't hurt anything, but that will keep those in place while you stitch. Now, I find it easier to start stitching here, so I'm going to spin this around and start up here, and I'm going to stitch right on the line or just to this side of the line. Now, the idea when you open this up is for this to now be one long strip. And when we iron it, it'll be nice and flat and it'll be one longer rectangle. Now to make the first block, 
we're going to need four of these bigger rectangle units. So we want to iron them nicely. So what we're going to do is open this up, kind of finger press it with your hands first, keep it flat, then give it some steam. And we're going to want to trim off these extra layers. So I find it easiest to do this with the scissors. So I'm going to trim a little bit parallel to the edge and then trim this off, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And so now what we've got is a nice big rectangle that's nice and straight and nice and flat. Now that we're done with the bigger rectangles, we're, we have the small ones here. We're going to use the same method, but we are going to take these backgrounds that have the opposite direction of line drawn. And this is going to get spun around like this so that this points at that dot and then we're going to stitch along there. Once you've got four of these small ones done, go ahead and iron them up, trim off that excess, neaten up that side. Now we're ready to make a block. So we've got triangles here and we're going to start with these pieces that have the shorter color on them. So I'm going to take one triangle and I'm going to put this right sides together and match up the corners here. And I'm going to stitch down the edge here. And you don't have to match anything. You don't have to meet anything. We're just going to stitch all the way off. This piece is a lot longer than the triangle. So just sew all the way off the end there. And you can either veer off or you can keep stitching straight. It doesn't matter. So do that with the short pieces on the triangle. Now we're going to want to finger press that seam allowance. So we're going to want to finger press toward the triangle here. So I'm just going to open it up and gently press along that seam. Now we're going to take one of these longer pieces here and we're going to line it up here, right sides together, and I'm going to flip it upside down. And we're going to stitch right down this side. Again, they're not the same length. Just don't stretch anything and stitch all the way down this side. Now this seam allowance, we want to press it toward the strip, not toward the triangle, toward the strip. And I know it looks a little funny right here, but that's okay because we're going to be trimming this down to size and it won't matter that this is part way down and part way sticking up. So just finger press right to the end. Now we want to iron this half of a block nice and flat. So I like to smooth it out with my hands first and make sure the seam allowances are going the way I want. Then use that dry iron then some steam. So the pattern has us make two dots on the edges here, one here and one right over here. And we're going to put our ruler from dot to dot and we are going to cut this. And so we're going to have a really nice, accurate triangle here. So even if your patchwork sewing wasn't perfect, you've got a really nice, accurate piece there. Now I know I said that we needed four of everything to make a block, but we actually only need two to make the block. But that's okay. We're going to need all the rest of these pieces to make the rest of the quilt anyway. Now these are going to be really easy to stitch together because we cut them after we stitched them, so they're exactly the same size. So we're going to line up the tips right here. And then if you'll notice, this seam allowance is going that way. The one on the back is going the opposite direction, so it's going to be really easy to make that intersection match. Same thing here. They're going in opposite directions, so I'm not even going to pin it. I'm just going to hold this one here and stitch a quarter inch right along the edge. So there is our first block. The points are nice and pointy and it's nice and accurate. So I'm gonna get the rest of them stitched up. The blocks are all done. We're ready to lay out the quilt. Now this is real easy. We're just going to put the blocks, we're gonna alternate the colors, 
and we're it'll be forming a star. So obviously I'm going to have to trade some of these around because I don't want all the orange in one spot. So okay. as I go, I may trade. Usually what I like to do is lay out the whole quilt and then when it's all done, then I will start trading blocks so that I get a nice color mix. There is the whole quilt. Now I haven't even traded any of the blocks around yet and it's so nice and balanced. That's the joy of using a jelly roll that has a lot of different colors and I only used 15 different colors and it looks really, really good. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit of trading. So right here, I've got the exact same block. So I will move this somewhere else and I'll start moving around but you don't want to get too, too picky. You don't want to be moving things endlessly because it can just take forever. So I'm just going to do a very slight amount and make sure that the colors are kind of balanced and leave it. Now that the quilt is on the machine, you can see these nice big stars and we need to pick a thread color to quilt it in. So almost any color would work, but I really don't want a lot of the thread showing in the background. I think if I use this gold color here, it'll blend right into the background, but it'll also enhance these little metallic gold dots on there. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use one called Van Gogh. It's very abstract and it's got those swirls. They look almost like waves. And I think those will look really good on the pointy stars. The pointy strip star quilt is done and there are so many different things going on. I can hardly believe that it came from one block. Normally when you have a one block pattern, you can't get these fun things around the edges, the half stars, the quarter stars. Usually it takes a lot of extra work to get that done, but here it all came from the one block. The points are really pointy every time. None of them, it's not even possible to get them cut off. And I like how this looks like it's curved there. It's got a nice diamond shape. The ombre patterns that we used, they make these borders almost look like they're shining. The quilting pattern, the Van Gogh, it is very abstract and it looks so good. Now on the back, we used the, Tos the Toscana fabric, which almost looks like suede, but just look at those fun swirls there. So here's the one block right here. And it takes a little time to get each block made, but every step gets a little bit easier and it was lots of fun to make. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial today on how to make the pointy strip star. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. We have two quilts we're giving away. These are picnic size quilts. We have this really cheerful blue and yellow one. These are Moda prints and that's a king's crown pattern. Or since we're coming into fall here, we've got one called Harvest all nice batiks and it's very easy to enter the giveaway just click that link right below the video that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name and you might be the lucky winner now if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel happy quilting